Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for Mecklenburg County's seven R's of waste reduction. This is our level two presentation after our recycle right presentation because people who took that level one, they wanted to take it further. So we are here uh, with the goal of reducing everything being sent to the landfill in Mecklenburg County. Uh, your presenters today are myself, Walker Spruill, and Maitri Meyer. And we have been doing these presentations for over a year. And uh, people really did just want to learn how to make the most of what they have available. So before we get into what the waste that we're producing at home, I want to briefly touch on what we call producer responsibility. And this is the reality that it is up to producers to determine how they're extracting materials from the earth, how they're producing them, what kind of waste is being produced, whether these materials are recyclable around the country, and then if they're making it to a landfill, if they're being littered, or if they're actually being recycled. So how all of this is done before you even receive the materials or have that option to buy these in the store, this is where it comes down to producer responsibility. And yes, sometimes there uh, are laws about it, but really we're going to bring that to you that if you're receiving, if you like an item that you buy in the store and it is not in a recyclable container, please contact those manufacturers because it is working. The plastic is the higher demand for recycled materials in plastic packaging and recyclability is reaching the people who are actually producing the plastics. Um, those uh, manufacturers are demanding more because their customers are demanding more. So please raise your voice to uh, manufacturers. Let the people at the grocery store know. Those managers say, hey, I really like these products, but I do not like the packaging. Can you do better? Um, and that is how we start moving other people uh, to give us materials that we can handle better in our homes. But we're here today to talk about what we can do about our own waste. And so that's why we're here for the seven R's of waste reduction. And yes, there could be 15 R's. We know that. We just had to whittle it down to our seven. So we have rethink the items that you are using and purchasing. Refuse items that are free, like straws and plastic bags. Reduce how much you're actually consuming and bringing into your home. Rot or compost. Reuse, which is reusing something for its original purpose. Uh, repurpose, which is turning it into something else. And then of course, recycle right. And we will do a brief overview of that, but thank you everyone for listening in on our recycle right presentation where we cover that thoroughly. So the first three steps are really tied together and they all happen before you have a product or an item in your hand to dispose of. The first is to rethink your consumption. Really stop and think about your waste generation before you buy anything. Do I really need this? Can I use something that I already have? Can I make it at home with less waste? What forms can I buy it in with less packaging? Are there any refill or bulk type bring your own container options over a single use packaging type option? So as Walker said before, is there any way I can contact the manufacturers to influence their packaging decisions for my favorite products, encourage them to make sure that their packaging is either easily recyclable like metal cans and cardboard, or even zero packaging options. And of course, the most important thing is to really rethink single use disposable items because those are the hardest to dispose of afterwards. The second R is to refuse unnecessary consumption. A lot of times or restaurants and other places are giving you items and you have to actively refuse them. So that's the straws, the plastic bags, 
the ice cream cups instead of an ice cream cone? Is there a way that you can tell them, I would prefer to have my uh, frozen yogurt, my custard, my ice cream in an edible cone, even if you don't eat the cone because you're gluten free, if you throw that away, it'll probably compost or do what I do, give it to your dog. Um, or is there a way that I can dine in instead of taking out? And I know during COVID, this might be a little bit more challenging, but I went to a restaurant recently at 2.45 p.m. in the afternoon when there was nobody there, sat in a booth in a corner and had a delicious meal because I did not want to take out the styrofoam containers that they were probably going to give. And then don't forget, are there any zero waste options for the same product that I might be getting? So if you Google zero waste and then whatever item it is that you're looking for, whether it be toothpaste, deodorant, shampoo, you know, there could be any number of things. You're going to get things like shampoo bars. You're going to get bulk refill options. You're going to get recipes from home or that one that I just showed you if you were on a couple minutes early that I put on my Facebook page a way to make liquid shampoo to put in a reusable shampoo bottle that I would have recycled or disposed of to make my own liquid shampoo in the future but before you buy any of these things try to research their claims to make sure that it really is the most sustainable option is it really zero waste or is there Packaging maybe not as sustainable as it, it, it could be a greenwashing marketing type thing. So try to research what you can. The third R of the seven R's of waste reduction is to actually reduce the amount that you consume. So how can I buy less of what I often buy or buy it less frequently so that it has less packaging? So for that, is there a way that I can buy something used or resale so that it's new to me, so that it isn't virgin materials aren't being manufactured again, but something that someone else had that they no longer need, I can reduce the overall consumption in the world by not buying a brand new one, but I can buy one that's already manufactured and out there in the world and it's new to me. Another one is repairing and refurbishing. You know, sometimes I think we just need to ask, what would my grandma have done or my great grandma have done during the Great Depression? They weren't buying a new washer and dryer. At, well, maybe they didn't have that. But they weren't buying new things constantly. They were repairing and refurbishing what they had until it was absolutely not usable anymore. I love this example. The shoe on the right looks like it is ready for the landfill. Obviously, it's not recyclable. You're probably not going to give that a way to charity, like a goodwill type place because the bottom is a mess, it's scratched up, they're stretched out. But if they bring that to a professional shoe repair shop, an old fashioned cobbler who knows how to replace the sole and completely clean that up, looks like a brand new pair of shoes to me. So that's a way to reduce consumption. How can you buy less often? We talked about this already. Is there ways that you can buy that item in bulk? So maybe there's one larger plastic bottle instead of 12 smaller ones. And this is my absolute favorite. I don't give away stuff when it comes to gift giving, holiday time, birthdays, etc. I prefer to give away experience. Because personally, I believe in buying less and living more. That's my mantra. I would much rather get a gift certificate for a massage, thank you to my husband who listens, than to get, you know, a bunch of lotions and plastic bottles and other things filled with synthetic fragrance that are probably going to make me sick at home anyway. So those are the first three R's and just some really high level ideas on how you can, um, how you can reduce your consumption and the subsequent waste before you even have an item in your hand. All right, so now that you have the items in your hand, it is how do I deal with them so that they are not headed to a landfill? So our next R is rot. So can it rot? And before we talk about rotting food, we need to talk about eating our food because unfortunately, about 40% of the food produced in the United States is thrown away. 
Um, and this is a huge problem in landfills. It produces methane gas, which is terrible for the environment, uh, worse than carbon dioxide, which is the big, uh, big talking point. And so really we need to work on eating the food before it goes bad. That means eating the stuff in your fridge before you go shopping for more. So once it is time to uh, compost that, uh, you can have a compost pile right there in your backyard. It's super easy. This is actually an open compost bin right in my backyard that, um, that has been there for about three years now. And you can put all of your leftover food in there. You can put your um, yard waste. You can put shredded paper, which is not recyclable here in Mecklenburg County. And all of these things co come together to make a beautiful compost right there in your backyard. Um, so, <laughs> Then if you don't have room for this large bin, uh, this open face bin in your backyard, then there are actually other options that make it much more manageable. You can have a tumbling composter like my tree has at her house where it keeps it much more contained. Uh, you can have uh, vermicomposting right underneath your cabinet in the kitchen in just a big Tupperware bin. So um, then they're in very lucky cities like ours, you can actually hire a company to compost for you. And they will actually give you a bin. You put the material, the acceptable materials into your compost bin and give it back to them and they will compost it for you. And ultimately they end up sharing with you that beautiful compost that you can spread around your lawn. You can put in your garden beds and your flowers to help turn that high value material right back into high value material instead of sending it to a landfill. Then we have reuse. So reusing is continuing to use the item in its original purpose. So in the world that we live in, before you know it, you have a whole bunch of single use materials that we never planned to purchase. We just left the house and weren't prepared. And old habits die hard. And before you know it, your trash is just overflowing with this stuff. And so for every item, I want you to just keep in mind, for every item that you get rid of, every item that you get and get rid of, they get to sell you another one. They get to make another one to replace the one that you've gotten rid of. So this is where we start looking at that single use um, versus reusable. And so can you um, explore how to use things like reusable coffee cups? Very simple, but uh, you know, what can you keep in your purse? Do you have a reusable water bottle? And it comes down to like when you go somewhere and they offer you water in a plastic cup, can you say no because you already have a water bottle in your purse? Um, and then also there are more uh, uncommon items like these utensils and you can bring your own so that you don't have to take them when you get to go. Or uh, like Maitri said, when she sat down in the, in the restaurant, um, I will go sit down in the restaurant and take my own to-go container and order it for there and pack it up to go. Uh, that way I'm, uh, I'm not creating extra waste that I have to take home with me and put in my garbage can. And so next we have repurpose. And repurposing is uh, actually a lot more fun because it's about getting creative with the materials already coming into your home. So what do you have coming in on a regular basis, uh, especially that's not recyclable? Like uh, best example that I have is yogurt cups because they are not recyclable here in Mecklenburg County. And when we wanna eat little yogurt cups or send them in a lunch, then that is the container it comes in. So how do we reuse them? And I jumped on the internet and saw there's toys and games. I personally use them to transplant little aloe plants and give them away to friends. So uh, also, so that's about looking at the items that are already coming into your home. And then the other side of repurposing is what do I need? What like what do I need in my home that I don't have that I can repurpose something else? So 
easy example, got some unruly cords. Well, use those paper towels or toilet paper rolls and a shoe box and you can organize those very easily. Uh, want to start growing some seeds? It's about that time to start sprouting them inside for spring planting. And so uh, easily jump on the internet and say repurpose seed starter and you're going to get tons of ideas. And that is where uh, you are really reducing the demand on the creation of those materials. Um, if you don't have to go out and buy a new pot to start seeds, then you're not telling those companies that yes i want that single use i can repurpose something that i already have at home and save money and the planet in the long run excellent so those were the first six r's of waste reduction and we really want people to think about and do as many of those first six r's as possible before they go to the seventh R, which is recycle right. And everybody on this call listened to the full recycle right presentation. This is the first time we've given a seven R's presentation ever, where everybody on the call clicked yes, so that's so exciting. So I don't need to go through much of a review on this slide, but just at a high level, remember there's about five or six categories, paper, and cardboard and cartons. I kind of put that in one big category. Um, cans, and then there's glass, and then there's plastic bottles and jugs only when they have nets. It's really important, as you know from the presentation, that we do not put anything else in our recycling bins that Mecklenburg County does not have a market for. If we can't sell it, it's considered contamination. We have to pull it out and that costs us a lot of money. And as we said, a lot of those contaminants can break the machines, injure workers and start fires. So let me just double check. Yes, and don't forget uh, some items that you can't recycle in your residential curbside container can be taken to a full service drop off centers to the household hazardous waste table. They can go into the scrap metal. And we do have a large yellow dumpster there where we collect glass of all colors because it's easier for us to sell glass if it, it comes into one container and we can ship it off without going through the separation process. And we also have a big container for corrugated cardboard. As long as there's no styrofoam or plastic wraps or films in there, if it's just cardboard. Okay, so that, oh, loosen in the cart, never in bags. Remember, that's the number one thing. Clean, dry, and empty. I knew there was something else we're doing. So we have several Recycle Right presentations coming up that are virtual presentations. We're going to offer them once per month to the general public, but we really want to have groups posting them for their membership. So whether it be a homeowners association, and you have 100, 200 households within your, within your HOA, a faith-based organization, a church, a temple, et cetera, and we can reach an entire congregation at one time, or professional organizations. We offer these presentations to any group of Mecklenburg County or Cabarrus County as well, because they also send all of their recyclables to our same facility, and we need to reduce their contamination as well. So if you have a group of 20 or more Mecklenburg or Cabarrus County residents that will get on a call with us, we would be happy to do a recycle rate presentation for them. If not, please direct them to our website, wipeoutwaste.com and ask them to sign up for one of these. Um, that's all we have for the seven R's for waste reduction. As I said, it's a short presentation because you're already experts. And most of the time that we spend together today is brainstorming. So just like we said in the other presentation, thank you so much. Remember to recycle, right? If you need to contact Mecklenburg County for any reason, here is our contact information, our email, solidwaste at mecnc.gov. We have a Facebook page where we post several events. We have shredding events, electronic take back events, and other events. And our general website, wipeoutwaste.com, where we have all of the resources and items that you can download and share with others. So when in doubt, throw it out or give us a shout. Thanks so much for participating in the seven R's of waste reduction.